DJI has been a market leader when it comes to smartphone gimbals for years. DJI's current and best model is the Osmo Mobile 6. But today we have a new challenger, the Insta360 Flow. It's based on a completely new design and concept. And today we'll try to find out if Insta360's new gimbal manages to knock the Osmo Mobile 6 off its throne. To make things a little more exciting, I've created 10 categories and will award one point to the winner of each category. I hope you realize that the categories and the awarding of points are subjective and the outcome could be different for you personally depending on your priorities. But before we even talk about my categories, I want to draw your attention to the design. And by that I mean the aesthetic design. The Osmo Mobile may look more compact than older models, but it basically has a very similar appearance to all of DJI's other gimbals. Here you can see a comparison with the Osmo Mobile 3, which is now a few years old. In comparison, Insta360 has come up with quite a bit. The gimbal is mostly white and looks very stylish. The transparent surface of the gimbal arm is particularly striking. You can take a look at the electronics. In comparison, the Osmo Mobile looks very boring and just ordinary. But since we are talking about aesthetics here, and of course that can be a matter of taste, there is no point for this. Those who film with a smartphone value portability. Therefore, it is important that the gimbal is also as small as possible and can be easily stowed, optimally in a jacket pocket or a handbag. And here we can immediately see a crucial difference between the two gimbals. The Osmo Mobile 6 has a separate tripod base. This has to be screwed on when in use and also unscrewed when you want to store the gimbal in a small bag or jacket pocket for example. The same applies to the magnetic clamp. When you fold the gimbal, you have to remove the magnetic clamp first. Neither is the case with the flow. You can leave the clamp on the gimbal when folding it. Of course, this has the advantage that you don't have to store the clip separately or leave it on the smartphone all the time. The likelihood of losing the clamp is greatly reduced. And the tripod is also integrated into the gimbal and doesn't have to be stored separately. You can simply pull the tripod out of the handle from below. So you always have the tripod with you and don't have to think in advance whether you will need it or not. Also, you can store the tripod and gimbal together in a more compact way. If you include the tripod, both gimbals have exactly the same weight. Without the tripod however, and you can remove it from the Osmo Mobile 6, the OM6 is 60 grams lighter. Still, for understandable reasons, the flow gets the point in this category. I don't want my phone to be attached to the gimbal all the time. I want to carry the gimbal in my pocket and then be able to take it out and activate it as quickly as possible. At the same time, balancing should not be an additional difficulty. So which of these two gimbals is easier to set up and quicker to activate. And again, Insta360 has thought about what could be done better. As I just said, with the Osmo Mobile 6, you have to keep the clamp separate. So you have to unfold the gimbal first and only then can you attach the clamp. You need two movements to unfold the gimbal. Now you can fix the smartphone to the gimbal and if you need it, also screw on the tripod. With the flow, you need exactly two movements. You attach the smartphone in the clamp that may already be on the gimbal and twist the handle out. And that's it. With both gimbals, you don't need to balance the smartphone additionally. The selfie stick is also equally easy to pull out. In practice, I think the difference is rather small despite everything, because the OM6 can also be activated very quickly and easily. The main advantage of the flow is in stowing the clamp and tripod, for which it has already received a point. Therefore, both gimbals receive one point. A gimbal should be compatible with as many different smartphones as possible, whereby I realize that everyone personally is only concerned about his own smartphone. But what about maximum payload and the size of compatible smartphones? In fact, there is a difference here as well. When it comes to the width and thickness of the compatible smartphones, there is only a slight difference between the two gimbals. First and foremost, the Flow is capable of holding slightly thinner smartphones with a minimum width of 64 mm. The same is true when it comes to weight. According to DJI, the smartphone should weigh at least 170 grams. The Flow can also handle smartphones that weigh only 130 grams. At the same time, it also has a higher maximum payload of 300 grams than the OM6, which can carry a maximum of 290 grams. And in fact, I have a smartphone here that is compatible with the Flow, but not with the OM6, the iPhone 12 mini. Even though it doesn't seem to be optimal, it still works with the Osmo Mobile 6. Especially if you have a very small smartphone, you should probably go for the flow. However, awarding an additional point for this seems a bit excessive to me. Both gimbals get one point. Both gimbals have the usual operating modes. A follow mode where the tilt axis and pan axis move. A pan follow mode where only the pan axis moves, so the gimbal does not move up and down but only sideways. And an FPV mode, which allows not only movements of the pan and tilt axis, 
but also of the roll axis, so you can also do rotational movements. The OM6 actually has two modes in this context. In FPV mode, the smartphone follows your hand movement and that also in the roll axis. In spin shot mode, you perform the rotational movement with the joystick. With the flow, on the other hand, you perform the rotational movement in FPV mode with the zoom wheel. Therefore, two separate modes are not necessary. However, zooming is not possible in FPV mode. If you don't want to worry about the mode at all, you can still use an automatic mode with the flow. Depending on the movement pattern, the gimbal will decide which movement it will follow and which it won't. But much more interesting than the modes, which basically hardly differ, is a comparison of the motion range of the two gimbals. And here there are clear differences. The range of motion for the tilt axis and the roll axis is still relatively similar. With the tilt axis, as you can see, it is almost identical. And with the roll axis, there is a small advantage for the flow, which can be rotated a bit further to the left. But there is a very crucial difference in the lateral movement. And that's what I'm going to show you here. The speed of the movement can be adjusted, by the way. The Osmo Mobile 6 is capable of doing about a 180 degree turn. The flow, on the other hand, can rotate almost completely in a circle, so you can set it up in the middle of a room and have it track you more or less all around. This point goes to the flow for me. Even though a gimbal today can do more than just stabilize, that is of course still its main purpose. So I did a stress test with both gimbals. Here you can see shots of both gimbals in comparison. Unfortunately, I only have one iPhone 14 Pro so I can't simulate identical movements. It seems almost impossible to determine a clear difference here. It's more important that you attach the clamp centrally and correctly to the smartphone. Otherwise, the stabilization can be disturbed with both gimbals. While Insta360 has tried to improve a lot and outdo the Osmo Mobile 6 in many ways, the handling is almost identical. Here, they have oriented themselves very strongly to DJI. The joystick and the individual buttons have almost the same functionality. So let's talk about the main differences. On both gimbals there are things I like about the handling and things I don't like about the handling. Let's start with the flow. The interface around the joystick has touch functionality. By swiping to the left or right in the circle, you change the mode. In my opinion, this only works conditionally well. You can change modes in both directions, but especially if you have a big thumb, the surface for this movement is very small. If you don't like the rotating movement, you can also change the mode by tapping the record button twice to change the mode to the left or tapping the switch button twice to change the mode to the right. This works better in my opinion. With the Osmo Mobile 6 you can only change modes in one direction and that is by pressing the button. The OM6 also has a slightly larger joystick which is a little better to use. What I like more about the flow is the zoom wheel. Not only can you zoom in and out but you can also change the lens. You do that by turning it briefly and then releasing it. This is extremely important to me because you should never use a zoom factor between lenses with your smartphone when filming. That results in a digital zoom and degrades the image quality. On the Osmo Mobile 6 you can only gradually zoom in and out with the zoom wheel, but you can't directly change lenses. Also, it happened to me more than once that I unintentionally touched the zoom wheel and zoomed in or out without wanting to. I would therefore recommend disabling it completely. But the Osmo Mobile 6 has another advantage. It has a longer handle and is therefore more comfortable to hold. With the flow you can partially pull out the built-in tripod and thus extend the hand grip. That's a good concept, but even then it's not as comfortable to hold as the OM6. Overall the point therefore goes to the OM6, even if the lead is small. Ok, what can one gimbal do that the other can't? The Osmo Mobile 6 has a few features that the flow does not. The app has various filters that change the image. However, these are not color filters. They are filters that brighten the face, make it thinner or smooth it out. So they are less creative filters and more beauty filters. In turn, the flow has a large number of color filters. I would tend to advise you against both types of filters though. Both gimbals support gesture control. The flow even supports voice control, though only in Shot Genie to view related shooting templates. Then the Osmo Mobile 6 can also change the focus manually using the zoom wheel, so you can do a manual focus pull with it. You can't do that with the flow, at least not with the Insta360 app. And currently only the DJI app supports Dolby Vision HDR. Of course, only for smartphones that support it. You can also film with the flow in Dolby Vision, but you have to use the standard camera app for that. Since Insta360 updates its apps frequently, there is a good chance that HDR support will be added. 
By the way, if you are interested in HDR, you can find a detailed video about it on my channel. In return, the Flow has a number of interesting features that the OM6 does not have. Earlier we saw that the Flow can rotate almost completely around its own pan axis. This is not only great for time lapses, you can also take 360 degree panorama photos with it. And Insta360 has come up with something very special for basketball fans. Using AI, the app recognizes when a basket is made and automatically captures highlights. After that, a highlight reel is quickly and easily created from it. The app also allows you to shoot in the cinematic 2.35 to 1 format. But the Flow has one very important additional feature. You can use it as a power bank while it's active. That's a huge advantage. Mainly for that, the Flow gets the point in this category. As we have just seen, a gimbal today can do more than just stabilize. But probably the most important additional feature is tracking. The app automatically controls the gimbal so that your subject always stays in the frame. This is not only great if you're filming yourself, but also if you're filming fast moving subjects or just want to set up the gimbal somewhere. And tracking is one of the flow's particular strengths. Here it is clearly superior to the OM6. And for several reasons. If you lose your subject out of the frame for more than 2 to 3 seconds, the OM6 gives up. The flow recognizes the subject again after several seconds and continues tracking. It also handles tracking in slow motion shots or at very high zoom levels. If the subject disappears from the image, it automatically switches to the widest possible lens to find the subject again. The flow still recognizes the subject even when the angle and thus the visible shape changes significantly. This point clearly goes to the flow. Even though I've been using a smartphone gimbal for years, I wouldn't call myself an absolute gimbal expert. Nevertheless, I got along quickly and well with both gimbals. Neither gimbal caused any particular problems during the test. The only thing I noticed apart from the above is that the OM6 is minimally louder when in use. There are those who also find it annoying that the tilt axis has little range of motion and you can only use the gimbal in flashlight mode when you pull out the selfie stick. That applies equally to both gimbals here. Since the selfie stick can be pulled out very easily and quickly on both, I don't see this as a major problem. However, there is a big difference in battery life. With 2900 mAh, the Flow has almost 3 times the battery capacity. And with 12 hours of runtime, twice the runtime. For this, the Flow gets another point. For understandable reasons, price is also important. The Osmo Mobile 6 currently costs $159 in the US and about 169 euros here in Europe. And the Flow costs exactly the same. So both gimbals get another point. And the Flow can clearly win the contest by 9 to 5. Both are good gimbals though, of course. But the Flow not only looks better, it can also do more. Its big strengths are the integration of the tripod, the tracking and the much stronger battery, which you can also use as a power bank. You can find a link to the Flow in the video description. I would only go for the OM6 if at all, if you have very large hands. Then the OM6 is just a bit more comfortable to hold and use. There will be more videos on smartphone gimbals and the Flow. Give me a like as feedback if this video was interesting for you and see you next time.